One minute, cancel, check your microphones, please. Cancel, check your microphones, please. Testing. Call the meeting to order. Madam Clerk, call the roll, please. Mr. Buckner. Here. Reverend Campbell. Here. Mr. Hood. Here. Mayor Jones. Here. Mr. Mayo. Here. Vice Mayor Miller. Here. Mr. Saunders. Here. Mr. Vogler. Here. Mr. Whittle. Here. We have an indication by Councilman Sherman Saunders, followed by a Pledge of Allegiance. Is everyone please stand? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. God, we come tonight to say thank you for all that you do for us every single day. We ask for forgiveness that those things we may have done that were not pleasing to you. We know that you, that we are your children and we know that you have children everywhere. Please forgive us, bless us, look after us, give us another opportunity to show the love that you showed when you were on the cross. God, we ask these blessings in your name and for your sake. Amen. Amen. I pledge, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I want to say good evening to those of you who are here in the chambers and to those of you who are watching us by River City. And to those of you at home, good evening to you all. Communications from our visitors. Any citizen who desire to speak on any item that's not on the agenda, please come forward at this time. Speak directly into the microphone. State your name and your address for the record. And good evening to you, ma'am. Uh, good evening. My name is Sandra Gail Motley, formerly Grant. I am the youngest daughter of Jordan Motley Sr., 690 Berryman Avenue. I stand before you today to inform you of our family-owned veteran business, Percolate International. It is a boutique software company. I ask for your support. According to a British professor speaking at a Microsoft symposium, he indicated that people with degrees in psychology will assist those in technology with identifying new opportunities and use cases. I began my college degree studying in business. I completed my degree in psychology and with our vision, I have created several designs that include solar energy for all types of living spaces, including batteries and new construction. Edustat's data analytics for learning Kasuma Online Interactive Reading, High G, Transformational Gaming, a phrase that I coined to describe the next generation of video gaming. Space A, short-term rentals for the military community. And I am pleased to announce that I received training as an IT software development project manager. I work with teams of IT professionals and stakeholders. Some of my work can be reviewed in the U.S. Bankruptcy Court that was
presented to a judge and reviewed by trustees to confirm my professional experience. A Georgia Tech colleague and a friend of mine for 20 years, Dr. James Logan, informed me that my software systems designs would have benefited him as a young adult and his grandson to pursue their education. A University of Georgia professor offered to assist me with obtaining funding for my software. A Clark Atlanta University professor offered to conduct a longitudinal study to review the data from our software. Amazon expressed interest in our interactive reading software program, as well as others in Silicon Valley. My father is deceased, but I think he would be very proud of me and our company at this moment. With business success comes challenges. Besides attempts to sabotage my business and attack my family, we have continued to move forward. Though my military records will confirm an honorable discharge, top secret security clearance, and other notable honors, I am pleased that we have been able to continue with our effort. We have had our home broken into, our cars broken into to steal business plans, thumb drives, and other handwritten designs. I assume that people like to duplicate vision, and I definitely have that. Along with the sabotage in business and attempts to then conceal that I am the innovator, I reluctantly have had to identify who I am, although I would have preferred to just grow our multi-million dollar business. Before anyone became interested in innovative products and solar energy designs, I created them. They can be verified. And again, my father is proud. In addition to the success, we received threats from an organization that's called Luminati that I've never heard of before. Again, as an African-American innovator, I'm assuming that there are some that don't believe that we can innovate and be creative at the same time. Efforts were made to sabotage my reputation, using women and children to harass my family simply because we created our business. You have about, I'll give you another minute so you can sum it all up, even though your time is up. Thank you. You're welcome. I did write a letter to you and I provided some details, but I wanted to put a name with a face. Oftentimes when you come from a small town like Danville, it's assumed that there can't be greatness within. I'm a representation of that greatness. We are looking for opportunities to partner and team with others as well as those that would like to assist us with achieving or the goals for our company. Thank well, you. Thank you so much. I did receive your letter. To your left, you'll see the city manager and deputy city manager. Sure. And they'll give Come you on. their card. I shared your letter with them, and we thank you so much for being here this evening. Thank you so much. Thank you. We're still in communications from visitors. Anyone else who would like to speak on any item that's not on the agenda may come forward at this time. Anyone else who would like to speak on any item that's not on the agenda. Please state your name and address for the record. Good evening. Uh, good evening to everyone. I'm Tommy Bennett, president of the Denver Branch NAACP. First of all, I would like to say on behalf of the NAACP, the Westmoreland Association, we would like to say thank you uh, for Mayor, for I still call him Mayor Sherman Saunders. <laughs> I would like to say thank you, Councilman Saunders. Thank you, Councilman Hood, our city manager and our deputy city manager, and um, Councilman Barry Mayo. 
on, the, on Monday morning at 10 o'clock, the nice um, marker that was done for Camilla Williams. It was a great honor. It was great history on her 102nd birthday. And it was really, really a great event. And the community, I've gotten so many calls. And the community would just like to say thank you to the city and for that marker at West End Avenue. It's beautiful and it will go down in history. And we would like to thank you so much for that. Also, we all know that November 2nd is Election Day. We are, are providing rides and phone banking and to everyone who need to get to the polls to vote. You can just call my phone or WW Transportation, and we will make sure that you have a ride to the polls. And please support our school 1% um, tax and also the bond referendum. Just flip it over on the back, and if you got any questions, just write yes and yes, and then we'll go from there. <laughs> but please vote, and the choice is yours. If you don't vote, the choice is theirs. So please, let me know if you need a ride to the polls. But November's at 2nd. It's Election Day, and we're expressing that we want everyone to please get out and vote on that day. Tommy, correct me if I'm wrong. You all are going to be hiring individuals. Yes, we are. We're going to be hiring individuals to do phone banking and to be dropping, uh, to do lit drops um, at $15 an hour. And they need to just simply contact your office? Contact my office or inbox uh, Tommy Bennett or uh, email me at trbennett55 at gmail. Thank you. Thank you All so right. much. Dr. Miller? Dr. Miller, turn your microphone on, please. There you go. Try it again. Try it again. Okay. Ah. Uh, you are hiring people to phone bank. Are they going to be promoting specific candidates or just the school bond or uh, They're going to be promoting everything uh, from... Just to vote. Yeah. We, what we're doing, we just want to encourage people to get out and vote. Uh, from the phone banking, we will call you, remind you that election day, because a lot of folks, this is an off year, and a lot of people is not even aware that election day is November 2nd. So that's what we're doing. Right. Thank you. Thank right. you so much. Thank you very much. All right. We're still in communications. Anyone else that desire to speak on any item that's not on the agenda may come forward at this time. Anyone else who would like to speak on any item that's not on the agenda may come forward at this time. Under the consent agenda, I open the public hearing. Anyone who would like to speak on any item on the consent agenda may come forward at this time. Anyone who would like to speak on any item on the consent agenda may come forward at this time. I close the public hearing. Council, what's your pleasure? Councilman Buckner. May I like to make a motion that we approve the consent agenda items B through F. Second by Councilman Whittle. Discussion of the motion. Madam Clerk, call the roll, please. Mr. Buckner. Aye. Reverend Campbell. Aye. Mr. Hood. Aye. Mayor Jones. Aye. Mr. Mayo. Aye. Vice Mayor Miller. Aye. Mr. Saunders. Aye. Mr. Vogler. Aye. Mr. Whittle. Aye. Under appointments, Vice Mayor. Yes. Yes, Mr. Mayor, we, we only have one appointment tonight, but I, I did want to put in a plug here for people, uh, if I could. Uh, Mr. Massey reminded me, we, we aren't getting a lot of applications now. We've had some committees that desperately need some people, who, some people who want to be involved with the city. Uh, the Transportation Advisory Committee, uh, the, they uh, uh, help the Director of Transportation and Mass Transit and Business and, you know, like Reserve a Ride, things like this. And then the IDA, the Industrial Development Authority, is charged with promoting the economic development of the city of Danville. So we'd like to have good people on these committees. 
Uh, you go to the city's website, there's an application. If you haven't applied in the last five or six years, you know, emails change and things like this. So put in a new application, unless you've done a recent one, and get those to us, because we need to appoint some people for these very important committees. Thank you. Uh, having said that, Mr. Mayor, we'd like to, uh, the uh, appointments committee, uh, comprised of uh, Mr. Mayo, Councilman Mayo, and Councilman Campbell, and myself, would like to uh, make a resolution appointing Sandy Irby to the Danville Community Policy and Management Team as the Danville, Pennsylvania Community Services Representative. Second by Councilman Mayo. Discussion of the motion by uh, Councilman Volger. Uh, yeah, Dr. Miller, you said the, um, one of the committees that has an opening is the IDA? Correct. Well, I, I would certainly hope we'd get a lot of applications. I know there's a lot of interest in that board. Uh, if my social media accounts are any uh, indication, so we should get a lot of applications. Thank you. Also, we mentioned Transportation Advisory Board. Yes, sir. So how many openings do we have on the Transportation okay. Advisory Board? Just one. But one. One on the Transportation yes, Advisory sir. Board and one on the IDA. Once again, you just reach out to our secretary. Call the roll, please. Reverend Campbell? Aye. Mr. Hood? Aye. Mayor Jones? Aye. Mr. Mayo? Aye. Vice Mayor Miller? Aye. Mr. Saunders? Aye. Mr. Vogler? Aye. Mr. Whittle? Aye. Mr. Buckner? Aye. Thank you. Under New Business Review of General Fund Finances for uh, September 30, 2021. Good evening to you, Michael. Good evening, City Council. In your agenda packet for this evening, you have the General Fund financial results through September 30th. Uh, that does mark the first full quarter of fiscal year 22. Uh, so starting with revenues uh, through September 30th, we're just over 20 million. Uh, that's an increase of about 1 million from where we were last September. Uh, these increases are primarily due to increased collections and delinquent taxes and also our local consumer-based taxes. Uh, more specifically, uh, our delinquent real estate tax collections were at a 422,000 at the end of September. Uh, that's 40% of our budget. So again, we're only 25% through the year, but we've received 40% of our delinquent budgeted real estate taxes. Um, as a reminder, bills for the current tax year will be mailed out in the next couple of weeks. Uh, they are due on December 6th this year. Uh, the 5th falls on a Sunday, so they're due the next business day. Local taxes, as I mentioned, are up uh, so far this year for the first quarter. Sales taxes uh, came in at 2.7 million. That's ahead of budget by about a percent, at 26% of budget. And it's also up 176,000 over last year. Uh, meals tax is performing very well at 2.5 million. It's at 29% of budget at the end of the first quarter. And that's up about 429,000 from September of last year. And then finally, our lodging tax, uh, it's at 510,000. That's coming in at 34% of budget. So over a third of our budgets have been received in the first quarter of the year. And that's up about 135,000 over last quarter uh, of last year, same quarter last year. All of our other revenues from the state and federal sources are coming in line with budget at present, so I have no concerns there. On the expenditure side through the first quarter, uh, expenditures totaled 35 million. Uh, that is an increase of about two and a half million over last September. Uh, the driving force for this, the primary reason, is our support of schools. Uh, if you recall, uh, schools were, did not start the year off uh, in the previous fiscal year with in-person instruction, but this year they did. Uh, so their drawdown of their funding is more in line with what we typically see in a fiscal year uh, compared to last year. So that's why that increases there. Uh, on the department level spending, uh, that was at 22% of budget, so we are experiencing some budget savings uh, through the first quarter. Uh, very normal, and we hope that continues through the fiscal year. Uh, for non-departmental expenditures, uh, they were at 30% of budget, so a little ahead of budget, but uh, those are primarily made up of group health insurance and debt service payments. Our, our group health insurance is coming in right behind budget at 24%, so that's a good sign. Debt service, as you can imagine, is not incurred evenly through the year. Most of our debt payments occur in March uh, and September of each calendar year. Uh, so with September being in this past quarter, uh, that's the reason that line item is running you know, a little ahead of 25%, actually at 37% of budget. Uh, so the first quarter results were very favorable uh, for this fiscal year so far. Um, also, as a matter of note, uh, we are preparing for our financial and economic development presentation to the bond rating agencies. Uh, that will occur Friday. Uh, so I'll report back to you uh, when I get the results from that to see, see how that goes. Uh, and that's all I have for this uh, month, Mayor, if there's any questions. Thank you. Councilman Campbell. You know my favorite question. Thank you. <laughs> what is our reserves? Uh, reserves, you know, it's, they ebb and flow through the fiscal year. So, but I did look at the end of September. Um, I don't remember the figures in the packet, but we are running ahead of where we were last September by about two million. 
Uh, so again, that'll ebb and flow through the year. Uh, we really get serious about it at the end of the year when, when all the revenues and expenditures are in, but we're I, on the right path right I now. I have one um, small question. The um, funds that we got from Caesar, yes. how much did that increase our reserves? Those uh, revenues were um, accounted for in our special projects and capital projects fund, so they are not reflected in that's, our general fund at all. That's what I wanted to that's, that's completely separate, separate. from, yes, okay. Sir. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, anyone else? Mike, great job, thank you so much, have a great evening. Under item B, consideration of approving the free bus service during the November elections. Councilman Vogler. Uh, yes, Mayor, I move we adopt a resolution authorizing the Danville Transit System to offer free bus service on Tuesday, November 2nd, 2021. Second by Councilman Saunders, discussion of the motion. Madam Clerk, Councilman Vogler. I just real quick, Mayor, wanted to, to give you a shout out again. I remember, I guess it was a few years ago, you and I first asked the city manager if this could be possible, but it hadn't been done here in the city before, and, and we've done it every year and every election, I think, since then. So I'm glad to see this continuing. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Councilman Campbell. I was just wondering, since Mark is here, um, how wild it was used last year time we have an election. Mark, uh, I think I saw Mark here. Mark, the question from Councilman Campbell is how widely used. One of the things that's happening that we heard just a few minutes ago, we got a lot of community involvement, WW limo service, we have the bus. How, how, how is it? Well, our fixed route service, we have no way to, to track where people get on and get off. There's um, and there's a number of election polling sites throughout the city, so <clears throat> it's really impossible to monitor that. Our reserve ride service and handyman service, senior transportation service is all based on reservations, and I don't think there was a very significant uptick with regard to use of our transportation service to go to polling sites. I think it was marginal. Thank you, sir. So that on, that, on that, Mark, on that particular day, all the services are free for the buses? Yes, sir. And that's the best thing about it. Thank you so much. Thank you. Madam Clerk, call the roll, please. Mr. Hood? Aye. Mayor Jones? Aye. Mr. Mayo? Aye. Vice Mayor Miller? Aye. Mr. Saunders? Aye. Mr. Vogler? Aye. Mr. Whittle? Aye. Mr. Buckner? Aye. Reverend Campbell? Aye. Under item C, consideration of approving and authorizing the city manager to execute the assignment of an existing poll attachment franchise council. What's your pleasure? Councilman Buckner. Mayor, I'd like to make a motion that we approve a resolution in authorizing the assignment of an existing poll attachment franchise from Chatmoss Cablevision Incorporated to its new owner, Zito Chatmoss LLC. Second by Councilman Mayo, discussion of the motion. Madam Clerk, if you don't mind, call the roll, please. Mayor Jones? Aye. Mr. Mayo? Aye. Vice Mayor Miller? Aye. Mr. Saunders? Aye. Mr. Vogler? Aye. Mr. Whittle? Aye. Mr. Buckner? Aye. Reverend Campbell? Aye. Mr. Hood? Aye. Under item D, consideration of approving and authorizing the release of city hail liens against parcels number 21232 and 24234 Jefferson Avenue and parcels 22490, 22491, 21930 Loyal Street Council, what's your pleasure? Councilman Vogler. Yes, Mayor, I move we adopt a resolution approving and authorizing the release of city held liens against real property identified at, as parcels 21232 and 242234 Jefferson Avenue and 22490-22491 and 21930 Loyal Street to facilitate their conveyance to the Danville Redevelopment and Housing Authority. Second by Councilman Mayo, discussion of the motion. But, Councilman Whittle. Um, we had 10, uh, we had 30 liens on that. Oh, yeah, thank you. Good evening, that, that sounds about right. Um, I believe it includes two demolition liens for two houses that used to be there and the rest are grass liens. Okay, and I guess it goes on to the next question with um, uh, Claiborne. Well, no, it was the other street. Calhoun. Yes, sir. That was the same. The sa same thing. I think those were all four. I think there were three demolitions, three houses, and then associated grass cutting after the fact. Thank you. No problem. Anyone else? Where are those lots on Calhoun? Where are those lots on Calhoun? 
Okay, so where you have the new, uh, I guess it's called the Peace, I believe the Peace Center. On the other side, if you notice there are, um, I guess, multiple vacant lots in a row kind of over there. There used to be three, uh, I think three houses there. All three have been demolished. The owner at the time is deceased. It's in the estate and basically I think we're getting a fair payment uh, from a purchaser who intends to develop on the lot. Anyone else? Thank you. Thank you so much. Madam Clerk, call the roll, please. Mr. Mayo? Aye. Vice Mayor Miller? Aye. Mr. Saunders? Aye. Mr. Vogler? Aye. Mr. Whittle? Aye. Mr. Buckner? Aye. Reverend Campbell? Aye. Mr. Hood? Aye. Mayor Jones? Abstain. On item E, consideration of approving and authorizing the release of city hail liens against parcels 20725, 21571, and 23906 Calhoun Street. Council, what's your pleasure? Councilman Buckner. Mayor, I'd like to make a motion that we approve a resolution approving and authorizing the release of city held leads against real property identified as parcel number 20725-21571 and 23902 on Calhoun Street to facilitate their sale. Is there a second? Second by Councilman Mayo. Discussion of the motion. Madam Clerk, call the roll, please. Vice Mayor Miller. Aye. Mr. Saunders. Aye. Mr. Vogler. Aye. Mr. Whittle. Aye. Mr. Buckner. Aye. Reverend Campbell. Aye. Mr. Hood. Aye. Mayor Jones. Abstain. Mr. Mayo. Aye. Under item F, consideration of the appeal of the Commission of Architecture Reviews decisions at 918 Green Street and 154 Chestnut Street. Uh, anyone who would desire to speak on this agenda item may come forward at this time. And so, at council, I'm asking that you all hold your questions. We're going to ask um, the appellate, Paul, Mr. Leapy, to speak first for 10 minutes. After that, the Commission of Architecture Review, Review will speak for 10 minutes, and we'll go from there. Good evening, Chair. Okay. Please state Thank your you. name and address for the record. Please. Thank you. Uh, my name is Paul Leapy, and I live on Main Street in the Old West End Historic District. Thank you for the opportunity to bring this uh, matter to your attention. I know that you've had the opportunity to... Uh, read the appeal document, and I won't repeat that uh, here. Suffice it to say that this appeal is not about solar power. We favor solar power. This appeal is about the visual appearance, the character of your historic district. The appellants, including myself, maintain that solar panels visible from the street, even on slanted roofs, are not compatible with the character of Danville's first historic district. <clears throat> Let me begin by pointing out a factual error in the material provided to you by staff. Staff offers that the applicant for the certificate of appropriateness was Mr. Lawrence Meter. The applicant is, in fact, Titan Solar Power on the original documents, an Arizona corporation. I submit that an Arizona corporation has little, if any, reason to be concerned about the uh, historic character of our city. They are far more likely to be concerned about their own profitability. Properties in question are actually owned by Frederick and Laura Meter, who are here tonight. Uh, at the meeting of your Commission of Architectural Review, uh, uh, or CAR, property owner stated uh, regarding 918 Green Street, and I, and I quote the property owner, eight panels on the front section, my wife and I requested that they not be put up, but the plan came in since we use so much electricity that we need more panels, end quote. So it was clearly the Arizona company uh, that was requesting those panels, and the homeowner preferred that they not be there. Now, during the meeting, city staff suggested to the CAR that the National Park Service uh, would support the installation of solar panels facing the street, explaining, and I quote, the impact of low-profile solar collectors where flush mounted on a slope roof, though visible, may not significantly diminish the his building's historic character. Well, if it says they may not, it also means that they may. Um, and that's really the point of contention. Uh, on the adjacent webpage, the Park Service also says, and I quote, an installation that negatively impacts the historic character of a property will not meet the standards for rehabilitation. And we do need to be concerned about that. 
I submit that the proposed installations do impact the character of the homes in question and the historic district overall. City staff also suggests to you that by following the process described in the zoning ordinance, the CAR must have arrived at the correct result. Initially, the CAR did. CAR decisions are actually a two-step process. Uh, the commission first decides whether the application meets the Old West End design guidelines, the document that we all use to determine what can happen in the Old West End. Uh, and uh, initially, the CAR determined that uh, the application did not, did not meet the guidelines. The second step is to determine whether the application should be approved because it will have no adverse impact on the character of the property or the historic district. According to the zoning ordinance, additional factors to be considered include the material texture and color of the proposed change, compatibility with the historic building's character and scale, the impact on tourism, and compatibility with the city's comprehensive plan, the 2030 plan. It is here that the appellants believe the CAR erred, failing to fully consider the zoning ordinance requirements or the effects of the proposed panel as they are required to do. Instead, one commissioner in offered a bias in favor of solar panels generally and suggested that the installation would have a positive effect on the historic character of the neighborhood. I find this hard to believe. Lastly, let me point out that historic preservation already has an enormous positive impact on the environment and helps to reduce climate change. Historic preservation reuses our existing building stock, conserves energy, and avoids the high environmental cost of new construction, including the manufacture of solar panels. Please don't allow an Arizona corporation and a misguided CAR with no representatives from the neighborhood on the CAR change the character of the historic district in place by your predecessors in the 1970s. I ask this council to modify the decision of the CAR to preclude installation of solar panels visible from any public right of way within the Old West End National Historic District. Now, let me ask those who came to support this appeal uh, to stand, and I will yield the balance of my 10 minutes. I have about five left. Who else is here in support of the appeal, please? If you're here to support it, please stand. Please state your name and your address. Good evening to you. Good evening. I'm Mary Kent. I live on Main Street in Old West End. Um, I came up to speak because I was actually at the meeting on another issue, and I regretted not getting up to speak because I didn't think there was any way it was going to pass. And so I just sat there and watched it happen. So glad to have this opportunity. Um, what I witnessed was a really organized plan presented by Mr. Meter. I mean, he had done his homework. It was great. Um, and then Mr. Leapy got up and did a very well-organized rebuttal. And then Mr. Meter said, you know what? I understand. I understand what you're saying. And yeah, we won't do those eight panels. And then someone else stood up and said, no. And I was having this whole kumbaya moment. I was like, this is so great. And then all of a sudden, other people outside the situation decided, no, there shouldn't be any type of compromise that happens here. Very disillusioning. And then the member on the panel, very pro-solar, very much swayed the argument, which I was, I was a little shocked. Um, I grew up in Arizona. I'm very, very familiar with solar panels. I'm also very, very nervous. But um, I know from the historic neighborhoods, those panels aren't visible. I know from the beautiful houses in the foothills, those panels are behind or in the backyard. So there can be a compromise here. We're all about solar energy. It just seems like we need to meet somewhere in the middle. So thank you. Thank you. Madam Clerk, stop the clock, please. 2.38. Mr. Leapy? Mr. Leapy? You still have two minutes and 38 seconds. If anyone else wants to rebut. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much. Commissioner of Architecture Review.
please state your name. Good evening to you. Please state your name and address for the record, please. And good evening to you. Good evening. Good evening. Robin Cruz, uh, formerly of the Old West End at 806 Main Street, currently at 322 West Main Street. Um, my name, again, is Robin Cruz. I am the chair of the Committee of Architectural Review. I thank you for allowing me to come this evening. I certainly respect and support the neighbors, the 15 neighbors, which are the appellants in this case, right to appeal the car car committee's decisions on 22 July of 21 regarding the solar panel installations at both 918 Green Street and 154 Chestnut Street. I do need to state for the record that I was not present at this meeting of 722-21 due to a work-related conflict. <coughs> I have, however, reviewed the minutes, backup materials, and the appellant's information. The car membership did follow a decision-making process as condoned by the uh, City Council of Danville uh, that evening, as Mr. Leapy clearly indicated in his appeal letter to Council, that included a two-step process, as he alleged, as he mentioned earlier. The first of the two-step process is important because the car committee standards cannot consider an, or anticipate all the circumstances that may arise. The first step, as Mr. Leapy indicated, determines whether the application respectively does or does not meet the city's guidelines, and the commission agreed unanimously that it did not. However, the second step, which is part of the two-step protocol, is that the commission decided that the solar panels would not adversely affect the neighborhood and that neither roof was a prominent historical feature of those homes, and this was by unanimous vote of the committee. The board did unanimously feel that the installations would neither be prominent nor remarkably visible. And what you have either circulated or in hand now is a picture of Chestnut Street where you do see the panels clearly indicated. Per the appellate letter, the homeowners are certainly entitled to protect and enhance their property's values, and the guidelines do indeed provide under Section 3B for technolo technological updates to be installed and be screened from view as much as possible. Um, therein concludes the car committee's position at present. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Ms. Cruz, do you have anyone else want to speak on from the Commission of Architecture Review? You have seven minutes and 37 seconds. No, I, I concede that I have nothing further. Thank you so much. Thank you. The property owner, Mr. Meter, good evening. Please come forward. Good evening to you, sir. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, City Council, Mr. Larkin, Mr. Reynolds. Thank you very much for allowing me to speak. My name is Frederick Lewis Meter, Jr. I live at 918 Green Street. And I, my wife and I have been rehabbing 154 Chestnut Street for the last 12 years. We've, and we are installing the solar panels. In fact, they are on the building today as we speak. I'd like to point out that this is not my fight. We followed all the guidelines, the procedures, and went through the administrative processes. <clears throat> this needs to be fixed. As a matter of public record, several years ago, I asked the CAR for guidance regarding solar panels, because this was my plan since 2004. I emailed Renee Burton and Dr. Leapy 21 months ago about the solar panels, stating my objective and I was moving in this direction. Many of the homes facing, uh, many of the homes in the Old West End, the reason I asked for this, are facing south. South is the optimum way to produce solar, as you can see that with the Catholic Church right now. On July 22nd, I presented to the CAR my case, and I might add, with no objections, from, with objections from Dr. Lieby. The board approved the proposals and with all the votes in my favor, no one against, and I want to repeat that, no one in the commission voted against the, the solar panels. The solar panels are now on Chestnut and awaiting the final inspection. I've got the approval from the CAR, I've got the permitting, and they're on the roof, we paid the money. We paid significant amounts of money for this. Now let's talk about some history. 154 Chestnut was a derelict home. It was not lived in for over 20 years, and honestly, this, sh this home should have been raised. The home needed everything imaginable. We've worked tirelessly to restore this home, stating that in 2009 we started, and 12 years ago, and now in a few short weeks, Dr. Garbett, 
will be moving into this home. We have thrown everything that we have into this project. We have safely removed all the hazardous waste. We've cut out the rotted beams. We rewired, we plumbed, we installed new floors and so on. This home is brand new. For one to qualify for state and federal tax credits, an historic structure, one needs to keep all the changes to less than 25% of the structure. We've done this, we've adhered to this, and we've built back better. For the last 24 years, Laura, my wife, and I have lived on 918 Green Street, but we've also resided in the Old West End for over 30 years. On the street that we live on, Green Street, there's 56 residences on this street. There's only 26 residents being occupied right now. Many of these homes are derelict. This is not because of the architecture review that people don't live in these homes. These homes are falling down. Okay, my family are significant property homes in the Old West End, and we, we, we work every single day on these homes, and we meet the needs of our tenants. Every one of our homes has needed significant electrical upgrades. They started at 60 amps, and now we have 200 amps. My home has a 400 amp panel. Okay, every home needed insulation, every home needed plumbing, every home needed wiring, flooring, <coughs> roofing, and significant foundation work on every single home we've owned. This is not a game. We work very hard at this. Late this summer, the school board hired a new administrator and she came to rent one of our apartments. When having the utilities turned on, the person in the utility department said, you don't want to live there, that's a dangerous place to live. Now, what's the story here? Do we want people to live in Danville or do we want them to go out to the county? I mean, I'm appalled that someone would say something like that. The city has a housing shortage, our nation has a housing shortage, and we're about to bring 154, a three bedroom home Two full baths back into the mix, okay? Uh, you know, this is really, really discouraging. My research shows me that Danville is beginning to experience electric power shortages. Our nation's going to experience this. Dick Cheney in, in the Bush administration said that we needed a coal plant every month being built for energy. Elon Musk just said last week that we need more electricity. Every single auto I'm give you manufacturer. Enough. Mr. Media, I'm gonna give you another minute. Keep going. Thank you. Keep I got going. like two and a half minutes because he didn't use them. Keep going. Keep going. The electric vehicles are coming, and when we have that, how are we gonna power them? We don't have the grid, we don't have the power, we need individual solar plants on everyone's home for this to happen. Let's not kid ourselves. We need to wake up and we need to prepare our city for the future. I'd like to tell you a little story, but I don't have time. But I've been doing significant things in the Old West End. I produced the walking trail, which also has, uh, there's two walking trails with, with uh, Lord Joyce Wilburn. I produced thousands of square foot of paving downtown to, to shepherd the downtown restoration. While I was downtown, two of the city's most storied and uh, prosperous businessmen said, what do we need this for? This is not going to work. And now they're sell selling Davis warehouses for millions of dollars down there. When I started this work down there, I was alone. There was no one downtown. Now it's a traffic jam. It works. I was right then, and I'm right now about this solar issue. You know, I'm out of time, but I've got other people that would like to speak. Okay, that's I, fine. The panels were put up last night in the dark, and I talked to people, I stopped people on the road today. I had a very short time to present myself and to do this, and I had over 20 people tell me how wonderful they looked. They do not impact the historic nature of the home. In fact, they look, they say, wake up, people, we're here, we're ready to work into the new century. Okay, I appreciate your time. Mr. Meter, let's see. Let's act everyone like we did before. Everyone who's supporting Mr. Meter, please stand up, please. Everyone who's supporting, please stand up. There's several people that didn't come because of COVID. Dr. Eggleston and his wife, my brother's on the road, to name a few. 
Thank you. The, the, you said there's someone else who would like to speak. Please come forward at this time and state your name and your address for the record. Good evening, ma'am. Good evening. Thank you very much for this chance to speak. My name is Dr. Ann Garbett. I live at 931 Green Street. Um, that's the house in the district that my husband and I bought in 1978 uh, when we first moved to Danville. We were thrilled to be in a Victorian house in a, a, a city that had an historic district. We loved it, um, and, and I still do. My husband did until he died in 84. Before he died, he served on the Commission for Architectural Review, in fact. He was, as I am, deeply committed to the principles that, that guide that, that body. Um, now, I'm ready to give up the 19 steps up to my bedroom every night. I'm ready to downsize, and I'm hoping to downsize to 154 Chestnut Street, one story. Um, I would not want to move to a house that in, well, I'd, I'd love to move to a house in the district, but not to one that didn't follow the guidelines for architectural standards, of historic, arch, arch, ugh, can't say it, historic architectural standards. I believe this house does. I do know that if you stand at the narrow little entrance between the two houses at 154 and whatever's to the left of it, you can, if you look up sharp, you can see those panels. I don't think that's going to undo tourism in Danville. Um, I'm thrilled to be living in a house that will not only meet architectural review board standards, but um, standards for our planet in the next century, and maybe even this century. Um, I think both those considerations are important, and we need to support Danville's historic district. We need to support Danville as part of our planet in the years to come. I hope that you will um, allow this to go on. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Um, anyone else? Please state your name and address for the record. Good evening, sir. Hey, I'm Barry Copland, 214 North Union Street, and I'm here to uh, deliver a message from Colonel Larry Meter, uh, who is Fred's brother, and he called me from Missouri. He's uh, coming back from having visited his grandchildren and prepared this message uh, and he, he wanted me to give it in his behalf in support of his brother. To the city council and attendees, all of us here share in the hope for Danville's brighter future. Our city, by means of its build out of downtown sidewalks and interchanges and its building purchases and renovations has added hope to a city that was blighted by the loss of two prominent industries. Much in the same manner, my brother Fred has completed similar work here in the old West End and throughout the city of Danville. For many years, Fred has supported and promoted with various projects our city's environmental sustainability. Thanks to his efforts, houses have been saved rather than destroyed. His work with pavers for streetscapes at the Danville Science Center is still walked on. That work was completed years ago, and as you well know, it will outlast any of the asphalt streets that constantly need to be repaved. Also, he's been president of the Commission of Architectural Review, referred to as CAR. In addition, he continues to work with the Danville Historical Society. In that regard, he installed the walking tour plaques throughout Danville's Old West End, as well as the museum's monoliths and I think he might have done that voluntarily. By introducing solar power to the Old West End, Fred has ensured that those houses will be environmentally and financially sustainable. Give him one more minute, please. That's why the Commission of Architecture Review has approved Fred's use of solar power. Thanks to the good work of Fred and many others who have helped preserve the history of our city, all of us have reason to hope for a brighter tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you so much. 
Mr. Leapy, I give you three minutes, followed by Commissioner, followed by. Thank you, sir. <clears throat> uh, there seems to be a, a, an impression among some people that uh, uh, folks on the old West End don't like Fred Meter, uh, and that is far from the truth. Every one of us would be pleased to recognize his past contributions to the city. Uh, they have actually been quite substantial. Uh, however, that has nothing to do with our appeal, uh, which is about the appearance of the Old West End. Uh, actually, in closing, I'd like to tell you about an email that I received just this morning. And this email came from a man who had uh, requested of the CAR that he be allowed to change his roof uh, from a metal roof uh, to a shingle roof. And that request was denied by the CAR uh, because such changes are not allowed. If you have a historic metal roof, you must continue to have a metal roof. Interestingly, the commission has approved, in this case, covering a metal roof with something else, uh, a solar panel. Now, the same man uh, is also very much in favor of energy efficiency. And he wrote to me that he sure would like to have vinyl windows and uh, uh, vinyl soffits because that would uh, uh, increase his energy efficiency. Um, and uh, uh, of course, we all know that the CAR would not, could not possibly approve vinyl windows. So this email from this morning really speaks to the, the point that uh, with enough exceptions to the design guidelines, you really no longer have a historic district. It's changed completely. Uh, now, about 10 years ago, when the River District design guidelines were, guidelines were created and the Old West End design guidelines were updated, it was thought that your design commissions needed more flexibility, more latitude. Now, many of the people I talk to uh, think that both of those commissions have too much discretion and are making decisions that are taking away the historic character of those districts. Uh, we can't have anything and everything and still have historic districts. We have to draw the line somewhere. So I ask you again to modify the decision of the CAR to preclude installation of visible solar panels. And I also suggest that you direct city staff to review both the River District and Old West End design guidelines with an eye toward limiting the discretion of these commissions so that we don't find ourselves in this situation again. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Cruz. Um, in rebuttal, uh, we do have a uh, process that the Committee of Architectural Review followed. We do appreciate that new technologies are at our back door that we need to embrace because new technologies are what is going to attract persons to the neighborhoods. We do certainly undergird the notion that we want to keep historical context. In this particular issue that came before the Committee of Architectural Review, the learned members of the committee did determine that they would have no adverse impact on the historical context of the two homes that were presented in the application. Um, again, we, we do have to embrace new architecture and new ways of doing business, but we certainly have to understand that we do have to keep historical context. Excuse me. I have done uh, in the past several days quite a bit of reviews of other historical context communities, Charleston, Washington, D.C., New York, and Savannah, to name just four. And I have found that they, too, have embraced some technology under certain guidelines, but each and every one of those, I think, that would be readily apparent to each of the council persons that they have very valuable historical districts have embraced this technology. Thank you very much. Thank you. Mr. Meter, council... Your questions are coming up next. After Mr. Meadick's three minutes, if you have any questions, get your questions ready. And Mr. Turner, I'm going to ask you to come forward and share with us after Mr. Meter exactly what took place and how they voted, if you don't mind. So we, you can pre prepare for that. Mr. Meter. Thank you again. I'd just like to point out that this is a, a body, the CAR is a body of my peers. These are people within the community that drive around and see what's going on. Okay? I didn't, I asked them to approve this. They have every bit, every right to deny me. 
And then if that was the case, it would have been fine. I did the due diligence. I even talked to Renee Blair and Dr. Levy 21 months before I even approached this, okay? I've, I've worked months and months on this. Now, I want to just frame one thing for you. The, the commission's objective here is that people don't take the parts off the house and throw them away. When it rains and the capitals in this building fade, we have to replace them and rebuild them, not throw them away and go to Lowe's and buy plastic. And so someone in the 154, for example, put a, a, a aluminum siding on this house in 1962. They cut the water tables off. They cut the, the, the bottom of the window sill off. I'm losing my words. They, they carved the, the, the wood along the window. They threw the gallery balustrade off. They threw the sawn balustrade. The sawn balustrade is costing me $300 a linear foot. It's beautiful. Wait until you see it. I want to invite every one of you to come see my building because it's phenomenal. Okay, but what happened when they took the, the, the aluminum siding down the bottom? The water runs down this, the siding and goes right into the beam. And it rotted the eight by eight wooden beams around the entire perimeter of this house, all 360 degrees. It took me five days for every 16 feet to jack this house, to take the beam out and put it back. And I don't know how many days it took me to recreate the, the water table and put it all back together. We restored every window. We restored everything. We've taken the siding off. We've taken the lead out. We've primed and painted and painted and painted. We've kept the plaster in the building. It's gorgeous. It's brand new, move-in, ready. And that's what Danville needs. It's a three-bedroom, two-bath, full-bath house. Thank you. <coughs> Mr. Attorney, please come forward and share with counsel. Um, correct me if I'm wrong. I'll let you go into the commission voted to allow. Give us some history, please. So, so, so the commission did, as both Mr. Leapy and Ms. Cruz stated, voted that there, there are two standards that the CAR looks at. The first of whether is whether or not it meets the guidelines. Everybody in here and in, in that hearing admitted that it didn't meet the guidelines. But they have a second step. And that second step is, if it doesn't meet the guidelines, does it, 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 does it do anything to deteriorate the value of the district or the structure itself? And that's where the CAR unanimously voted no, that it didn't. Um, so what you all are tasked with, you all have two actions on here. You all are tasked with either affirming the ruling of the CAR, and that's the resolution, or uh, as Mr. Leapy has asked, modify, I think he meant reverse, uh, to reverse the CAR. And what that would mean would be that, that you would reverse the CAR and then Mr. Beter would not be able to keep his solar panels. So you all need now, you can ask, I, I believe it's okay to ask questions. I, I believe. I want you to stay there. I want you to stay there. And what I'm going to ask counsel to do, um, please get all your questions to our attorney. Our attorney has the information. Uh, the, the presentations that was pre presented tonight by all of the persons was great. So we'll yell out. I'm just going to start with Buckner and come around. Councilman Buckner. Thank you, Mayor. Um, attorney, could you tell me, um, is the, the opposition in question, is it because it's on the side of the house and it's visible from the street? So if the panels, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, but there are multiple sets of panels on the property? What I understand is because it is visible from a public right of way. So that the, that if there these are, panels go away and are moved to the back of the home, they're not visible from the street. Is that correct? I don't believe they would be. I'm, That's correct. I, they I haven't they certainly looked, wouldn't be. Yeah, I haven't. I, I don't know what right of way is behind there, so I wouldn't know whether or not they'd be visible from a right of way. Very good. Yeah. So, no possible way that I could panel on the Okay, thank you. That's why I want all of the questions directed at the attorney. Gotcha. Um, I think they, uh, let me just say this. Once again, each presenter did a fantastic job. Um, they were very cordial with one another. Counsel, I just want to remind us, let's not stir the pot. Um, ask your questions and ask your questions to the attorney. This is a very sensitive matter. That's why we have allowed everyone to take time to present their case. Councilman Campbell. But it's a compromise. Well, is there a compromise, sir? I, I don't believe there is a compromise. I believe you're all, b b because as, as Mr. Meter just said, there's no way you can go or no public right-of-way where you can't see them if you were to move them. 
Uh, so I, I, unfortunately, I think in this situation, you all, you all are going to have to make the decision to either affirm or reverse. And I'm glad you mentioned that because I'm glad you clarified that because I kept hearing modify and I don't think modify is involved in this. Correct me if I'm wrong. I, can't, I see reverse, but I kept hearing, I heard modify. Modify would be if there was a way to move them so they couldn't be seen from a yes. public right away. And I believe what there's Mr. no way. I, I don't want to put mis words in Mr. Leafy's mouth, but I think he was asking you to reverse the 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 finding of the commission. Okay. Councilman Campbell, anything else? One, one more in reference not only to this, but a template for new technology. Do you see anything if we modify or amend? Uh, I think. I think there is some work uh, that needs to be done by the planning department and by the city attorney's office to bring something back to you. Okay. Uh, and I believe that's something that everybody agrees need, may, may need to be looked at. I think each person said, let's, let's, let's look at these guidelines. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Mr. Buck, I'm sorry, I'd get back to you. City attorney, um, thank you, Mayor. Am I correct in, in understanding um, the guidelines of the uh, Old West End that as long as it's not visible from the street, that's correct. So in all my years I've lived here, I've never known there to be a street behind 154 Chestnut, a public street. What's well, a public, not just a public street, it's a public way. Anywhere, it's a, a public way, which mean, could mean a sidewalk or an alley, as, as in addition to just a regular street. Does it say public way or does it say street? It says, it says public way. Thank you. Councilman Mayo. Councilman Vogler. Yeah, um, a, a few comments, questions. I didn't realize we weren't going to be able to ask Mr. Meter and some other ones questions, but I'll try to adjust. Uh, to your point, Councilman Buckner, I, and I could be mistaken, but I think also, if I heard Mr. Meter correctly, they're placed in the position that's facing the optimal sunlight. So that that's why they are where they are. Um, Mr. Attorney, do you remember, do you recall Again, how long this house was vacant prior? I know it was mentioned. Again, I, I'm having to ask you questions that I yeah, I, I, I don't recall, but it, I, I I don't believe I, I believe it was probably a, more than ten years. So it sat and deteriorated for a decade plus, probably before this work was being done on it. Um, so again, to to clarify, then cause I had other questions, but they're not going to be pertinent to, to asking you. So I guess my final question for you is, um, again, to clarify, we approve a resolution affirming the CAR's decision, this solar panel stay. That's correct. We reverse the solar panel. Has to be removed. Re have to be removed. What's already been done. Yes, sir. Thank you. Councilman Saunders. Well, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Mr. Attorney, the Commission Architectural Review, was that vote Unanimous. Yes, sir. Yes, yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, sir. Councilman Hood. Councilman Vice Mayor. Yes, uh, question. Are there panels now on the back of this house? He stated yes. The answer is yes. Mr. Meters, I took notes. He said yes. So there are some on the back. Question. The contract with Arizona, whatever, how long is that? How long is the contract with Arizona, the solar company? Um, I, I, I believe they were. I believe they were just the ones that installed it. I don't know that they necessarily have the contract with it. Now, anybody's free to correct me if I'm wrong, but I thought they were just the installer. And because the petitioner was not the Arizona company, the petitioner was Mr. Meter. So, what happens? You know, all these things have a finite lifespan. When the panels become obsolete or damaged, or new technology comes, and they decide to be taken off, then, then what happens then? Are we back to a metal roof? Uh, it, well, first where, of all, you know, these things. They're, uh, and, they're, all, they're always going to have to adhere to the building code standards. And if they become dilapidated, then the homeowner was going to be responsible for fixing them and fixing the roof back to the way it currently was is now or was prior to so the So you'd have to put panels. it back the way it was with the metal roof, or we have to install more panels if the panels... In other words, what becomes the new standard? I think that's one thing we're going to have to look at, and, and in response to uh, Reverend Campbell's question, I think that's one of the things we're going to have to look at and determine. I think we're going to need to look at what the new standards are, because quite frankly, this 
this, this isn't written very well to incorporate technology. You good, Dr. Miller? Yeah, it just, just worries me because, you know, this is, I'm, I'm a, acknowledge I'm a proponent of, of solar panel, but even with our own contracts we have with different organizations, uh, what happens at the end of the contract? All that equipment, where does it go? To a landfill to be destroyed or does it, you know, does it, to get replaced, uh, you know, that's something. I don't know if we have in our contracts with the city, as with certain companies uh, we've contracted with, but they have about a 30-year lifespan. When they become deteriorated, or what happens? Who gets them? Who inherits the... the I, I assume the property owner will dispose of them as he sees fit. Go in our landfills, probably. But anyway, it's aside the point. But I just want to know what the new standard would be. Once you put these things up, does the new standard become solar panels? or something similar, or does it become metal, back to metal? Let me answer it this way. Under today's guidelines, it would be going back to the metal roof if they were to come off, and like, like if, they, if we are 30 years in the future and we have today's guidelines, which I don't think we'll have, but we had today's guidelines, and they would go back not to solar panels, but to a metal roof, and if somebody wanted to put up solar panels, they'd go to the Commission of Architecture Review and request that to continue the, that, that uh, that type of roof. Thank you. Councilman Widow. So um, these are going to be on a case by case basis. Yes, sir. From, uh, yes, sir. Again, that both, both these folks and groups uh, are uh, great uh, uh, advocates for, the, for this area. And um, uh, that's what I just one that they'll be done. And, and that's a great point. I think everybody needs to understand that everybody that was here today and spoke and everybody that was here today and didn't speak that is here for this case is an incredible ambassador for our city. Uh, they all care about our city. They just have a difference of opinion about this particular structure. But they're all, they have all done tremendous amounts of work and, and, and been very dedicated. So I think that needs to be recognized. Councilman Whittle, anything else? Councilman Buck. One, one more quick thing. Are the panels installed at 918 Green Street yet? Have they been installed yet? They have not been. They have not been installed at 918 Green Street. Will, will these also be visible from the street? Do you know yet, or will that be? Is that it, Councilman Buckner? Thank you. Councilman Saunders. Thank, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Mr. Attorney, the rules, the policy regulation governing these, okay? Governing these. Do we need to look at these policies as opposed to where they are, as opposed to the, um, the world today versus in the past? Solar panels were not that popular a long, long, long time ago, but they are now. Oh yeah, because they were ugly. They, they were very ugly and you wouldn't put, you wouldn't put them on it. So do we need to? Absolutely, I think, and, and, and that's one of the things I think, I think the plan, now I think you all have got to make tonight, the decision tonight on tonight on these rules, but that is something that the planning department and the city attorney's office needs to look at together to, uh, to, to, to look at all of these rules really. Uh, and I think that's something everybody's requested tonight. Sounds good. Councilman Campbell, this is the last one, Councilman Campbell, then we're gonna call for the vote. Councilman Campbell. How can we make a decision and knowing that there will be some upgrades or some questions on the policy, the the way that is written. But because it, it's like any it's like anything, you always make the decision on the law that's at hand. Laws are you know if you think about it from the perspective of being law, they're regulations, but law laws are amended every day, and and judges have and, and essentially what you all are sitting as is is judges, and you all are sitting as as the judiciary body for this particular case, and you know, there's not a single judge that hasn't made a ruling on a law and not within just months had that law changed. So I, I would just like to make, <clears throat> to see this table that we can discuss this as council in a work session to see what is the best vote that we can make in reference to both sides. I, the only thing I would say is you, 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 you do have a homeowner who's installed these panels 
and there's a lot he's got a lot on the line and you also have <coughs> folks who have appealed and they feel like they've got a lot on the line that's so. why we need to have a discuss so councilman vogler yeah and, and councilman campbell I, I understand where you're coming from on that but i i to the attorney's point money's already been spent things have been done you, you know we've we've listened for about an hour um or i don't know how a while um the case being for and against um, we have a, a commission of architectural review who looked at this thoroughly and made a, a decision. Um, and, and this is typically, if you go back years, a very thorough board that is, is you know, I think pretty strict on things, um, but unanimously made a decision on this. So uh, as far as things that may or may not be changed down the line, I mean, that, that, that could apply to any number of things we vote on just tonight alone. I mean, things could always be changed and improved, and we don't table every vote on what might be changed four or five months from now. So one way or another, I mean, I'm ready to vote tonight. I think we've heard the case. I think we have a process that's currently in place that's been followed, and uh, I'm ready to, to move on. Let me just say this. Um, I appreciate everyone, uh, Mr. Attorney. I want to piggyback off of Councilman Whittle and on the attorney. He talked about good folks. These are good people. And we've been talking about the community for quite some time. I have to agree with Councilman Vogler. It's time to vote. And I just want to say to you all who presented yourselves this evening, thank you for the way you presented yourselves. That's one of the reasons that I didn't want to cancel. I want to cancel to ask their questions. But this all bodies that are involved see a community that I grew up in and they wanted to make a, Mr. Meter was absolutely right, Mr. Leapy was right in regards to the community. And it went from being a Green Street community to Old West End. And what I've seen over the years has been absolutely fantastic in that community. Council, there's two resolutions on the floor. What's your pleasure? Councilman Vogler. Mayor, I make a, uh, uh, propose we adopt a resolution affirming the Commission of Architectural Review decision to approve certificates of appropriateness for rooftop solar panel installations at 918 Green Street and 154 Chestnut Street. Second by Councilman Mayo. Discussion of the motion. Madam Clerk, if you would go to the podium and please call the roll. Mr. Saunders. Aye. Mr. Vogler. Aye. Mr. Whittle. Aye. Mr. Buckner. Aye. Reverend Campbell? Aye. Mr. Hood? Nay. Mayor Jones? Aye. Mr. Mayo? Aye. Vice Mayor Miller? Aye. And the motion is approved and passed. Under item G, consideration of amending the fiscal year 2022 budget appropriation ordinance for a grant from the Department of Homeland Security. Council, what's your pledge? Councilman Vogler? Uh, yes, Mayor, I move we adopt an ordinance amending the fiscal year 2022 budget appropriation ordinance to provide for a grant from the Department of Homeland Security in the amount of $125,889.52 and a local share in the amount of $6,294.48 for equipment and to administer training to the public for a total appropriation in the amount of $132,184 and appropriating same first reading. Second by Councilman Mayo, first reading. Under item H, consideration of amending the fiscal year 2022 budget appropriation ordinance for Comprehensive Services Act funds. Councilman Buckner. May I like to make a motion that we approve an ordinance amending the fiscal year 2022 budget appropriation ordinance by appropriating Com Comprehensive Services Act fund and providing local matching funds the total amount of $4,780,388 on appropriating the same first reading. Second by Councilman Campbell, first reading, Communication City Manager. Oh, I'm oh, sorry, Councilman Saunders. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I would like to ask the manager, maybe at a subsequent meet, another meeting, uh, with regards to the Conference Services Act. This started back with Commissioner Larry Jackson years ago, Department of Social Services, and it cost a lot of localities a lot of money, but the General Assembly did approve it. So every year we have to, I guess, approve the state allocation as well as um, add money to it. So I would like to know, are we seeing a decrease in the need to add money? Are we seeing an increase in the uh, need to add money? Which one is it? Uh, the whole idea is, is to give assistance to our young people, and some of the services can be very, very costly, and that's understandable. 
So I would like to know, um, are we continuing to escalate in the cost or are we decreasing the cost? And at a, at a subsequent meeting, I would appreciate knowing that. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, sir. City Manager? Deputy City Manager. Thank you, sir. City Attorney? If you're viewing at home or on River City TV and you could not hear the attorney because he was not had, doesn't have a microphone, our next council meeting will be November the 4th due to election on November the 2nd. City Clerk, roll call please. Uh, yeah, uh, any of my fellow Kiwanians that are watching that night, if you, I just recently became president since uh, you just heard what the city attorney said. I guess I won't be at the next Kiwanis meeting, but I guess I have a valid excuse. I'll be here. Um, briefly, I just wanted to say that um, I know probably just about every council member is going to touch on this, so I'll, I'll try to be brief on it, but uh, we, we've lost some great folks in the community, uh, certainly Linwood, Wright, um, everyone, and I'm sure a lot of you know, things have been said about Linwood, uh, Richard Turner, and, and, um, uh, but we, we lost uh, Vicki Farmer, and, and I know everyone up here and, and a lot of folks in this room certainly knew uh, Vicki. Uh, she was very special to, to each and every one of us. And, um, you know, I, I, um, I'm going to miss talking to her tremendously uh, you know, right over there. And when always asked me about my kids and just the, the sweetest, sweetest human being you would, uh, you would meet. So she was very special to each and every one who, who's been here at City Hall and touched I, I, countless, countless lives. Um, we're going to miss her a great deal. Um, I, I did want to mention, because I saw this in the news, and it's, um, it's, it's good news, and I, I typically like to end my, my time in these meetings on, on something uplifting and positive. Um, it was just recently reported that this past summer was the uh, lowest number, well, it was zero, but it was the lowest number of homicides for the summer months in the city of Danville since 2015, um, which is fantastic. And if you look at actually the chart, it's been going down each year for the last few years. And that's for a number of reasons, but it starts with a tremendous police chief, Scott Booth, who has come in uh, and hit the ground running these last few years and, and brought in community policing and brought in just a number of initiatives uh, some of which, you know, some of us were banging the table down here for a long time and, and um, you know, didn't, didn't get adopted until this chief came in and, and has just done an amazing job. <coughs> the men and women of the police department, great officers like uh, Officer Graves behind me and so many others, you know, this, this police department is doing a tremendous job. Uh, they're working hard every single day. I mean, it's, it's never been easy to be a police officer, but certainly, you know, these days it's, it's hard to find police officers, you know, because of just the stress and the strain of the job on them and their families. Um, but they're doing it. And I think, you know, when you look at the results, uh, they speak for themselves. And so, uh, and by the way, and you may have seen the news on this too, but we are now paying our police officers. The pay for our police officers is the best in this region. And I think that's important. I think it's important. It's a credit to this city council and city manager and the staff that uh, we support our police officers. You know, there's a lot of conversations nationally going on about police departments and supporting and funding and defunding and all these things. We support our police department. We support our police officers. I think the results the last few years have spoken for themselves. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, yeah, yeah, I would uh, never vote to defund our police force in any way. They are the just absolute best. Um, and when it comes to the, um, the situation in the, in the uh, old town or um, old West End, um, you know, the next few may not get passed. So it is a process that we're in. And I guess, Clark, before they have their next meetings on those, that they will um, work out where we won't have this crossover, possibly.
That's all I got. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I'm going to piggyback off of uh, Mr. Whittle's last statement there. Um, I think there's a, a, a point of compromise that, that needs to happen, um, and I think we should um, certainly review things that um, that need addressing. Um, I think tonight's outcome was very good. Um, I think everybody um, will understand uh, why the decisions were made um, the way they were. Uh, Vicki Farmer, I used to love her conversations. I'll forever cherish her conversations. I'll call her. And uh, every time she answered, just so bright and full of life and just a, a sweet, sweet person. I called her Sunshine every time I called. I said, how you doing today, Sunshine? <laughs> She's a very sweet lady, and she will be, certainly be missed. Um, also want to invite everybody out uh, this Saturday to the Bridge Street Food Truck Rodeo. Is happening this Saturday, and Dr. Miller's going to be serving some good stuff out there, I hear. Uh, anyway, it'll, um, that's from 11 to 6. I uh, hope everybody can make it out. That's all I'm Thank you. Thank you. Yes, I would like to ditto what's been stated also. I remember several years ago, we had a problem with a window pane, and uh, the wooding of the window had to, could not be artificial. So I would, I would most definitely agree that there are some things that need to be upgraded for the future. Um, I would agree once again of all of the words that have been stated about Vicki, even with um, Colin Power in this community. There's a lot of grief in the community. There's a lot of uh, hurting people in our community. We need to always pray for the Spirit of God to comfort the hearts of families who are going through tough times, and only his spirit can feel that hurt and that pain. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Again, I want to um, give our sincerest condolences to uh, the Wright family and Ms. Farmer's family. Um, I also want to touch, too, on an event that they had um, last Saturday, again, to go back uh, with the, uh, the hip-hop event to have that many young people come out with different personalities, all encouraging each other. That's something that I don't want to overlook and to continue to push forward and let them start thriving because they've started watching council meetings now. So that's good. So you're bringing in a different community that's seeing what's going on in the city and they're getting more involved. So I just want to give kudos to them and continue to support uh, breast cancer awareness. Always want to speak on that for this month. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, just picking back and off and hearing what everybody is saying, uh, the outcome of what we just did with the West End, uh, just sitting back, just thinking, and just being able to take in what is being discussed on both groups. Well, wow, tremendous, tremendous. And knowing, growing up in that area, seeing what is happening. Uh, so the outcome that I, I feel that tonight, I feel good about what we did was the right thing. Uh, the Camilla Williams um, um, tribute was very, very good. Uh, Tommy. I was there, did a good job. I can remember those years and days. My mother used to talk about that whole House Hill area. And of course, Sherman really brought the light to everything because history, I love hearing about the history of our city and what has happened back in those days. I'm just fanatic about hearing it and being able to learn it more and more. So that was a great experience there. Had a chance to talk to Scott Booth today and our police force, giving them a lot of credit for what has been done, how he's Ball along some change to the fact that it's good. And uh, he's looking at other stuff that he and I had a chance to talk on in reference to several things that we can continue that, that change and continue the good and continue to, to make our city the best city possible to live in. Uh, continuous prayers for our young people in our school system. We, we have to keep them in our prayers and keep them at top, like the mayor is saying. Uh, as number one, we got to continue to work at that. And not only that, but continuous prayers for our nation. We still dealing with the virus. Dr. Miller, I continue to listen to you and continue to, to, continue to listen to your guidance to all of us. But um, uh, people out there, let's, let's continue to do what's best for us all. And vaccination is it. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah, I talked with Vicki Farmer. She, right before I went to VML, and. Uh, she apologized because she hadn't got all the schedules out for the council members that were going to Virginia Municipal League and, and said she'd just been busy. Well, she'd been getting treatment 
uh, yeah, she'd been real busy, and she apologized as she always does, and said, "It's okay, Vicky. We, we, we can get there." And you know, and then just a few days later, she was gone, and you just don't know how quick you can lose somebody, but you've been there as long as you can remember. Uh, the police, well, yeah, I saw something the other day. More policemen had died of COVID last year than than uh, than uh, shootings. Uh, they are out there on the front line. They don't know who's got COVID. And between that and suicides amongst policemen was already high before this pandemic. Uh, it, it's tough to be a policeman, and we just salute all these first responders, firemen, policemen, all these people that go out. Don't even think about it. They just do their duty to help the rest of us. Uh, Tommy Bennett. Uh, appreciate all you do with the vaccines. Uh, he also pointed out something very important. The most important vote you're going to take this time isn't for the governor, isn't for the lieutenant governor, the attorney general. It's going to be local for that school referendum. We need the school referendum passed uh, so we can get damn well economically continued on the right track and get our kids educated in good, safe, clean, up-to-date buildings. Um, the um, I got my flu shot today. I want to promote that as well as the uh, COVID shot. Next year, they'll probably put them in the same shot. They're talking about putting them in, you get one shot and you get both. Uh, you don't want to get the flu. If you get the flu and COVID back to back or together, that's a double whammy. Uh, so get your flu shot. And the symptoms so overlap, sometimes you don't know what you got. Uh, but the best thing to do is get vaccinated against both. 2,000 people a day are still dying in this country of COVID. Been over 300 died in Denver, Pennsylvania County, and everybody in this room knows somebody, a friend or a family member who's died of COVID. Uh, the level of transmission is still high. Uh, I may have sort of, uh, I didn't want to leave a misimpression. Last time I was here, I was talking about the, the hospital, you know, and how hard they're working and have, couldn't transfer people out. Most of the people that have COVID, they don't need to transfer out, they take care of them. Uh, with limited staff, limited nurses, limited resources, and limited rooms, somehow the, the vast majority of people that come in that hospital with COVID get treated, and whether it takes a week or four weeks, they get them well and send them home. It's amazing. So they're doing an outstanding job. Uh, what I was referring to is a specialized thing and only a few need, but it, the, the ECMO uh, device, which is only held, had in major centers. But again, the people, the nurses and the doctors that take care of COVID in the ICU are just doing an outstanding job. And finally, the final thing is, please vote. Get out there and vote. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'd like to uh, recognize um, Officer uh, Taquan Graves. And, and I say to all of our youth, you know, this man coached many of you in middle school, um, in high school. Uh, this man has done so much for our city, and now he's a sworn police officer doing even more. So you're looking at a live example of young people and their abilities. And sir, we thank you so much, so much. And not only is he a young officer, but he's also um, a young vice president of our school board. So, Danville, I'm, I'm, just, I'm just proud uh, of, of our city. Regarding Camilla Williams Park, I thought the event was, uh, was very good, went extremely well. And I got an unexpected quote from Councilman, um, uh, Councilman Hood. And he talked in his remarks about Cabela Williams, he said, he ended by saying, bite off more than you can chew. <laughs> then chew it. <laughs> I have been thinking about that all day. And that's what Camilla Williams did. She bit off more than she could chew, and look where she ended up, world famous. So, yeah. More and bigger things out there for you, and by all means, take, take advantage of them. To our Vice Mayor, I uh, appreciate your reminder about these shots, and I am very proud to say that I have all of my shots except for the booster. 
I do want to get the booster, but I have everything else, the, the flu, the pneumonia, the shingles, whatever it is, okay? I think I've been stuck more time than a porcupine, but that's okay, you know. <laughs> <laughs> that's all right. And I ask people to continue to pray for the families of General Colin Powell, uh, former Mayor Linwood Wright, uh, Vicki Farmer, former Deputy City Manager, and, uh, uh, yes, and Acting Mayor, Richard Turner, and, and Jessica's. For all the people who've gone on, who've worked hard to get us to this point, and we are the one behind them, they carried the baton, and they passed it on to us. We need to run with that uh, baton and pass it on to others who will be coming behind us as well. And with regards to uh, our mayor was there, did an excellent job, and I also saw other mayors. Uh, we had Mayor John Hamlin, Mayor Seward Anderson. So I don't know who all was there because the uh, people at the funeral were in two separate locations for safety purposes. Uh, certainly our city manager was there, our deputy city manager was there as well, uh, Corey Bobe uh, and her staff. Um, Telly Tucker came in for the funeral as well. So there were just a number of people there and just outpouring of love. And I thought everyone did extremely well to include um, the pastor of the church. I, um, I, I thank Mr. Mayor that pretty much take care of me for tonight. But again, I ask you to continue to pray for people leaving here left and right, you know, and people that we know, they're, they're leaving here. So continue to pray for them. And uh, Officer Graves, thank you so much, sir, for being a role model for the city and so many young people. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, sir. Councilman um, Saunders, I think you may have gotten us in trouble because uh, our vice chair, police officer Graves, and our school board member, they don't like us to call them out, and I'm glad you called them out. <laughs> so they won't say I did it. <laughs> I'm so glad because it's well deserved. You're absolutely right. It's well deserved. They don't like to be called out, but we appreciate the work that they do. And Terrell and Taekwon, thank you so much for what you're doing. I'll be very brief um, this, this week. Are you students here from Tonstall? Please stand. Please stand. Please stand so your teachers can see that you're here. Let's give these young people a big hand to sit through all of them. When, when everything is over, we'll come over and sign your papers so you're for your class assignment. And we have school board members here, and we have a former school board member, Stephen Gould, here. It'd be so nice if, Councilman Vogel, if we can get some city school students here in this chambers. Um, this week, at past, this past week, something happened at the funeral of Vicki Farmer. And Councilman Saunders and Councilman Whittle, they went over to our friend Tommy. And I kind of figured what was going on, Councilman Saunders and Councilman Whittle, we were dealing with this city has dealt with Norma, the passing of Norma, the passing of our police officer Jones, Linwood Wright, Richard Turner, Vicky, and it's been one hit after the other. And when I got to Tommy, Tommy was feeling like I was feeling, and he said to me, he said, I see Norma, I see all of these persons who died in our community, and this is painful. So in your prayer, Councilman Saunders, you mentioned about forgiveness. And I would behoove us, if you have an awe against your brother or your sister, people are leaving here, if you heard it before, and we've attended so many funerals, we have another um, graveside. And at the funeral, I think I mentioned it to Madison. Madison and I talked about it. And I said, Madison, did you see the number of funerals that were going on while we were at Vicky's ceremony? And, and he and I talked about it. And if, if I could share this one thing, and I did not know Madison was going to share this with me as we were talking. And he said, when you saw me at one of my places, there was a person, is it okay if I share this? Uh, he said, when you saw me and you blew at me at one of my places, he said, that's one of my tenants had been laying in the home deceased and lived by himself. And so I, I started 
praying for Madison because we have just came from that funeral. We were at a funeral. We were at the graveside for Vicki. So please, let's just love one another and, and the prayer forgive one another. You heard me talk about this the whole time for weeks. Vote yes, DPS. But not only am I telling you to vote yes, you've heard Tommy and others. For some reason, people are not mobilizing to vote. We don't care who you vote for, but it's very important that we get you out to vote. We need a yes vote. Most of our schools was born in the 50s, built, built in the 50s. We need, you've heard Councilman Campbell earlier ask our financial director, what do we, how much money do we have in our rainy day fund? And so, several people have mentioned that, why vote yes? And if, even if you don't have any children in the school system, think about the future of Danville, Virginia. Education is this council's number one priority. Please, young people, if you register to vote, please get out and vote and vote yes. Please, please, please. School board is doing their job. Our superintendent is, in my opinion, is doing an amazing job. We need your help. We need you to vote yes for DPS. And most importantly, take this campaign very seriously. Get out and vote. We have free buses. We have free limousine rides. Tom is going to be hiring people to get out and vote. We're not telling you who to vote for, but we're asking you, please, if you can give us two yes votes, please give us two yes votes. Brian Hood, congratulations. I don't think council, people, council members know and the citizens don't know. I snuck into the city armory. He, I didn't want him to know I was there. I was way back there in the back. And he's absolutely right. The young people were amazing. It was packed. And there was no fighting. We don't talk about that stuff. It was no fighting. It was no shootings. And it was jam-packed. Great job. Also, congratulations. Brian was appointed by our governor in Richmond to the Virginia Data Advisory Commission for the state of Virginia. Congratulations. <laughs> You and Councilman Saunders both did a superb job yesterday, superb. You did such a great job yesterday. We're letting Tommy pay for the dinner again tonight. <laughs> There's three things that I want to share with you all about what's happening in the city of Danville. We don't, I talk to the city manager all the time. We don't toot our horns enough. Tonight I'm going to toot our horns. There, across our city, there are three community centers that have recently opened up and one that we're about to open up. If you go through Cardinal Village, as Councilman Saunders mentioned about our young people, we have a brand new center there that Earl Reynolds and city manager and DRF and the housing authority worked hard for. It's Southside Community Learning Center, brand new center for our youth. And it's for the whole Southside, for all youth. You don't hear us mention a lot about that, that, that youth center over there, but it's there. This is not just words. That's a youth center. It was millions of dollar youth center over there. Secondly, several of us, including Tyrell, yeah, I call his name again, we were at, on, this, on the north side. Now, the South Side Community Learning Center is on the south side. We attended an event, many of us in here, on the north side, on East Thomas Street. Pierre Jones and his trustees and his board of directors, they have a new family life center, the ARC Family Life Center, and they have, it's a multi-purpose center, beautiful, and their goals is to adhere to all activities, anything on the north side. This past week, we were at the police precinct at Green Street. The police precinct now is going back to a youth center. It's called the Peace Youth Center, and on the ribbon cutting, it's going to be December first. On the south side, we got the South Side Community Learning Center. People talk about what the city of Danville is not doing for our youth department. This is a fact. These are facts. Go visit it for yourself. Then you go to the Green Street, the Green Street Police Precinct will no longer be the Green Street Police Precinct, it will be the Peace Youth Center on Green Street. And you heard all of this today, tonight, in regards to Mr. Meter, as Councilman Whittle talked about, what these wonderful people are doing in the community. And then you go over to the north, on the north side with Pierre Jones and his trustees and the board of directors, what they're doing. Visit these places. This is not just talk. These are people making a difference in our community, and we sincerely appreciate it. Last thing is, I'm asking the city manager to please help us to promote this market monster mash trunk of treats on the 31st. 
We want to create a huge event at our community market on Halloween. It starts at 5 p.m. They're still looking for people who want to get. I was there a couple of years ago before COVID hit. It was absolutely magnificent. And city manager, when you're putting this together, if you see fit for council members to get involved passing out candy, I would love to do it. It'd be nice to be there with the young people passing out candy. So this is going to be at our community market. I'm asking the city manager, the deputy city manager, if you all can promote this more. We got partners with URW. There's a lot of partners, Boys and Girls Club. There's a lot. This is going to be huge. So if you're looking for a safe place to trunk a treat, trunk a treat, please, city manager, please chime in. Thank you so much. Thank you for, uh, for that. We'll certainly do what we can to promote it. And it, speaking of Halloween, I, and I think it's on the same day. It's, it's on Halloween. It's, it's, uh, we, we have this as an option for, for parents uh, to take their kids to it. But we don't play a role. It's a question that happens every year for one reason or another. We don't play a role on whether or not there's trick-or-treating in neighborhoods. That's something that the community decides to do on its own. Uh, families can open up their homes and invite people to come and, and hand out candy. We encourage people to do it in a safe way. That's We do not change the date of trick-or-treating for the normal, what people think of uh, in neighborhoods, uh, and we're not going to do that this year. We haven't done it before. We're Say not it again, it this Ken. Year. <laughs> we are not <laughs> changing Halloween uh, no matter what. It'll be on October 31st this year, as in every year. Uh, and uh, we, But we are offering this other option uh, for folks uh, to trunk or treat at the community market. Thank you so much. Community market, if you're looking for, a, I mean, it's, it was great. Lastly, please vote yes for DPS. This is the last time I get to hold up my sign. I believe I can give it to the school board members. Can't give it to you, you in uniform. But I give it to Rail. you can take this back with you. But again, thank you all so much to all the families and to everybody in our community. Thank you all so much for all your support, our community. On that note, this meeting is adjourned.